The average American produces 4.4 pounds of trash a day. That's 30.8 a week and 1,608 a year. Altogether, we produce more than 250 million tons of trash a year in the United States alone. Let me put that a bit into perspective. If we were to put all of that trash into garbage trucks, we would need more than 14 million trucks. And if we were to line those trucks up, one after another, they would wrap around the Earth's circumference twice. Now, with a growing population and an increase in consumerism, the question is, what are we going to do with all this trash? Because currently, our landfills are becoming full. And trash is one of our biggest exports. When it's not getting shipped to another country, it's ending up in our oceans polluting our marine life, and expanding the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And it's not just here in the United States. After high school, I wanted to explore. So I moved abroad and started traveling. And during my travels, I noticed a few things. It all started with the cigarette buds on the streets of Paris. See, once you focus on something, you start to see it everywhere. And for me, it was litter. Despite our different languages, customs, and traditions, everywhere I went, there was trash. Whether it was the water bottles in Vietnam or the plastic wrap along the alleyways of Morocco, I encountered trash everywhere. In economics, we learn that your voting has power. And every time you buy something, you're telling the market exactly what you want. And currently, we're voting for apples packaged in plastic, plastic water bottles, and plastic cups. I was on a 23-hour flight home from Southeast Asia, and I started to reflect on my travels. And I started realizing how angry I was. I was angry at organizations for not cleaning up their monuments and angry at governments for not having street cleanups. When the flight attendant asked me if I'd like a cup of water. And airplanes are really drying, so I said thank you. And I will never forget that moment. It's as if the engine stopped roaring, and all I could think about was that plastic cup of water. That was my eighth cup. I could have refilled one of the ones sitting on the floor. Or better yet, I could have brought my own reusable water bottle. But instead, I chose convenience. And it made me realize that I had to take responsibility for pollution. That my choices are the reason that there are water bottles in Vietnam. And so I had to be a conscious consumer. So when I got home, I decided that I wanted to find a solution to this problem. So I started analyzing what I was throwing away. And you don't realize how much you throw away until you stop taking out the trash. And what I found was that the three main things I threw away were packaging, food waste, and junk. I searched for alternatives, and during my search, I came across a family of four living in California that produce one mason jar of trash a year. So inspired by Bea Johnson and her family, I decided that I wanted to take on the same lifestyle. So I live what's called a zero waste lifestyle. I produce almost no trash. In fact, I don't own a trash can in my apartment. And no, I'm not a hoarder. Instead, I make simple choices in my life that help me live a greener life. So let's start off with packaging. My name is Manuela Barron, and I'm a recovering plastic addict. Think about it, we're addicted to the stuff. Whether you, it's when you wake up in the morning to go to brush your teeth with a plastic toothbrush, to maybe your breakfast, a yogurt in a plastic container, or your lunch, a sandwich in a plastic baggie. 
we are consumed by plastic. Our lives revolve around this stuff. So I wanted to eliminate plastic, not only because it's harmful to me, but because the average plastic can take anywhere from 450 to 1,000 years to biodegrade. So I started choosing things that came in without packaging, like soap and shampoos, or things that came in glass and cardboard. I then started minimizing how much I actually used. Now, just because a marketer tells you you need 10 products on your face before you're out the door, does not mean you actually need 10 products. So instead, I started minimizing, and then I started making some of my own products myself. I brushed my teeth with a toothpaste made out of coconut oil and baking soda. By the doing this, not only was I able to reduce the trash from my daily routine, but I was actually able to get out the door faster. Then I had to tackle food packaging and food waste. In order to reduce food packaging, I took a tip from Bea Johnson, and I started shopping from bulk. Now, I want to make a clear distinction that I shop from bulk and not in bulk. I'm not buying a year's supply of something that I'm never going to finish, but rather I go to those aisles in supermarkets with legumes and loose snacks, and I bring my own reusable cloth bags, and I fill them up with only what I need. I then go home and put this in mason jars to keep it fresh, and you could do a similar thing at any meat or cheese counter. You can ask them to put the item directly in your jar, and it reduces any styrofoam or plastic packaging. So I was able to reduce almost all the packaging in my pantry. And then I wanted to tackle food waste. Because according to the National Resources Defense Council, Americans throw away 40% of our food. We're throwing away $165 billion worth of food every year. And the problem is, when you throw away your food, and you package it in a plastic bag and ship it off to a landfill, it's not under the right conditions to biodegrade. So instead, it produces a harmful methane gas. So to combat, to combat this, I started composting. But I don't live in a house with a big backyard. I live in a studio apartment. So I had to find a way to compost indoors. So this is my compost bin. I use a vermi compost, which means there are worms inside that box that break down my food and turn it into a rich soil that can be used in a garden. So this is my trash can. Um, anything organic can go into it. So anything from hair to nail clippings to food scraps, it all ends up in this box instead of the landfill. And then we move on to junk. Now, just in junk is something very hard to dispose of, so instead you have to prevent it. Now, when I'm talking about junk, I'm saying refuse anything you do not need. That's saying no thank you to freebies. You don't need that free pen or that free t-shirt that's ultimately going to become another sleep shirt or the even business cards and flyers that you're never going to look at again. I'll take pictures of business cards or any information I need, and I'll tell the person that I simply live a paperless lifestyle. By doing this, not only do you reduce the clutter from coming into your home, but you're also telling the world exactly how you want to live. For instance, if there's a booth set up and they run out of free pens within the first hour, they're going to say, wow, people really like pens. And the next time that booth sets up, they might have double or triple the amount of pens. But if a booth sits out there the entire day, and hardly anyone takes a pen, they're going to say, well, that pen idea really didn't work. Let's scrap it. And that is how your choices have power. So these are just some of the things that I've been doing in my life to live a zero waste lifestyle. I share more ideas and tips on my Instagram, The Girl Gone Green, and I've been able to meet a community of people that live the same way as I do. But there is one less thing. There are about 100 of us in the room right now. And together, we produce more than 160,000 pounds of trash a year. That's five garbage trucks. But what if we could reduce that by just 20%? Not only would we be able to reduce our trash to just 3.5 trucks, 
but we'd be able to develop habits that can make a huge impact in the long run. So what can you do? I'm talking about not getting your groceries double bagged, about bringing your own water bottle when you can, about choosing things in glass and cardboard over plastic, or my personal favorite, saying no thank you to straws. Think about it. If you eat out a lot, there are straws in your drinks. And we only use this for about a few minutes, seconds even, and then they're deemed useless, off to the landfill. But if you order your drink and say, no straw please, it's not gonna change the taste of your caramel macchiato, but it will make a huge impact in the long run. So I'd like you all here today to make a promise to make a promise to live a greener lifestyle, to exhibit some of the habits you've learned here today, and to say no thank you to straws, and choose just one less thing. I'm not here to change the world, but rather I'm here to inspire you to take the small steps, because together we can change the world. Thank you.